Hi everyone, and welcome to uh, another episode, a story episode of the Liverpool Connection podcast. I am Daz, your host. Um, chuffed to have uh, this lad in. Um, I've been after him for a while, um, not stalking him because that's a bit weird, but um, just uh, I've, I've always liked the band that uh, he used to be with. Um, but we've got the bass player for uh, Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds, and if if uh, if you don't know about Noel's uh, band, I don't know where you've been living, but he also uh, was bass player for the Zootons. It's Rush Pritchard. Hiya, mate. Uh, happy to have you on. I'm going to talk lots of footy and lots of lots of musical influences and all that good stuff. Good, good, good to be here. Nice to be on. Yeah, well, you're back. You're back home, so you know you're, you're not you're not sweating bullets like you were a couple of couple of weeks ago when you're over in America. Yeah, and no, I was pretty hard. It was pretty um, not to be all. It was a hard rock and roll life, but um, <laughs> it, was pretty, it was just a bit off doing the gigs and all that. You know what I mean? It was a bit, uh, it was a bit sweaty, and it's kind of like the only thing that I'm not really, the only sort of situation I'm not that keen in doing a gig in where it's just absolutely pissing my through with sweat. Um, but uh, no, it's great. I love touring America. I love touring America. It's boss. It's kind of built for it, really. You know, as you know, obviously we've been over there, but it's a. Uh, you know, massive roads, massive bus, massive buses, <laughs> all that shit. Um, so, yeah, no, it's been good. It's been good. And it's good to be back, though. It's nice to be back. And it's nice to get excited for this footy again because because it was like the last seven weeks or so when we were there. We were there for the Champions League final as well, actually, because he went to the Champions League final thing. So it must have been like the end of May. Yeah, it was the end of May, June that we went. And... Um, but it was like footy just off then, isn't it? It's off the cards for a bit. There's no. I just don't look at it for for a while. I don't listen to talk sports. I just leave it for try and leave it for a month. You know what I mean? But now I've come back, and it feels like you know there's a lot of transfer talk and all that, and the the, the team are off. You know, doing the training camps and all the rest of it. So it's exciting again, and it's like it's like feels like a real good start. Like you know what I mean? Uh, it is because I mean, like after after last season, um, it, you know, I didn't want to talk about football and nothing. You know, which yeah. again is hard to do when you have a, a football podcast. You, you've got to, yeah. you've got to grin and bear it, and and you well, know, yeah, this is it, isn't it? We've, we've, we've been having such a good time, and I think this is the quandary that is Liverpool in a way. Like we've been having when since Klopp came in and was successful quite quick, you know, and the dream of having the sort of dream manager came around because you know I'm I don't know how old you are, like I'm forty four, so we've had like. A while of shit, do you know what I mean? Like, you know, and just and sort of always wondering. I wonder if we will get the guy who you know will do it and all that and be. And he's like, I remember when he when he arrived. I remember saying, funny enough, to some of the lads on tour, I was like, if we don't do it with this guy, I reckon we might not ever do it because he just seems so perfect. And Rafa seemed perfect and didn't and failed, obviously, if you like him in the league. But I just thought. I just thought we'd end up being like the Chicago Cubs or something if we if we didn't do it soon. If it didn't, if it got, you know what I mean. If it got to like forty, it's just going to be fucking silly. So, um, so yeah. So it's been it's been. I think because we've been having such a good time and seeing everyone else having a good time, you think that we'd have the, the logistical plans in place to keep the team fresh. And I think that's where we've clearly failed, isn't it? Really, up until yeah. at the end of last year. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, we, like admitting we, that, but I think it's true. Like, well, we really should have, you know, been sorting this this crap out about three seasons ago, and we've just let it, you know, it's, it's it a weird, best. Yeah, it's a weird one like that, isn't it? Because you think, like, I can't understand why, if you know, because people say maybe Klopp's too loyal, and maybe he is. I don't know, but you know, you can't be. Look at like you know, City getting rid of Gundogan and all that. You know what I mean? Like, he's just been ripping it up, absolutely ripping it up. He's gone. Like and I know that's I know it's because of the situation and the contract and all that. You know, it's like it's the right time for him to move and all that. But like you'd think if that was at Liverpool, we'd be we'd be we'd be shitting ourselves. Like, what are we doing? Getting rid of this guy, you know what I mean? But they've got he's already he's got the culture of refreshing the team really, really right. But you know, I've got a lot of faith in Klopp. I've got shit ton of faith in Klopp. I think I think he's gonna he's gonna come back really fighting this year. I do too. Um, I want to go back to to the younger Ross, you know. Um, when 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 did you really start supporting Liverpool? 
Um, when I was about four or five, I reckon. I mean, you know, as far as I can remember, I suppose it's always been there. My dad lived by the ground when he was a kid. Um, so he was a big Liverpool fan. And we didn't used to go very often when we were kids. We used to go like on we used to work a lot, my dad. Um, so we used to go in the week like the week nights, like in like the Rumbelows Cup or whatever, and things like that. We'd end up going to normally. As a fan, I can remember coming home from my nan's after the 86 Cup final with like a teddy bear or something that was like dressed up or whatever and sticking that out the, the car window. So uh, I was always obsessed with it with footy and then I played a lot of footy as well. And um yeah, I just loved it and I still I still do love it now. I love, I love, I have, I, I quite like getting into belligerent arguments with people our age <laughs> who, who say, oh, isn't it shit now it's changed and, you know, the money's come in and spoiled it. I'm like, no, man, it's brilliant. It's like it's a multi-billionaire, like high-end. Everyone's like got to be super high-tuned. Do you know what I mean? It's like I think. I mean, obviously, it has changed. And I suppose when people hark back to it being better in their day and all that, they, they just don't like the change. But I, I think the change is good in football, and it, and it will it, it will forever change, won't it? You know? Ah, it will. You know, it, it, we can't be le- left behind. But um, do you remember your first match? Yeah, I think it was Oxford in the cup or something like that in about 1986 or 87. Something like that. In fact, I'm, I think, because Rush left in 86, didn't he? And I think his last game was against Oxford. I might be getting this mixed up, but I think I was at that for some reason. I was either at that or I phantomed a couple of memories together to make it like it was Ian Rush. But I'm, I, I seem to remember Oxford in the midweek in a cup. Or something like that. Most unglamorous, really, like my dad to take us to something like that. <laughs> so was it mostly your uh, your dad that took you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. My dad, and then later on, when I got to being about eleven, my uncle, who's a big blue, he married into our family through my dad's sister, um, and he had a he's well, he still got a barber shop on County Road, and they. They're all blues, like, but I used to work in the barbershop sweeping up when I was about 11. So he used to take me to derby games and stuff like that at Goodison, which was always a brilliant thing because he was just, he was, he was really, I mean, my dad was into football, but not as much as my uncle. My uncle played a lot. So I used to play a lot with my uncle and we used to, he used to take, he took us to like the four all at Goodison and stuff like that. We always talk about that as a, as a mad memory, like, because I've got a great memories of that being in the top balcony at Goodison and, um, and it being just an insane game, you know what I mean? I think that was, that's Kenny's last match, is it? Or the one the one before his last match, something like that. I think he, think he left after he got, we got beat in the replay, didn't he, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Who, who was your favourite player growing up? Uh, growing up, I mean, John Barnes. I think anyone about our age, when that 88 team kicked in, you know what I mean? Like when, like I'm saying, I can remember '86, and, I, and I've watched the '86 Cup final so many times as a kid that I could sort, sort of talk you through it. But I suppose being eight or nine by that time, or ten or something like that, that you know, and we bought Bar- when we sold Russian, bought Barnes, Beardsley, and Aldridge, like that team, and obviously we're going to win the league and everything else. Um, yeah, that team was wild, wasn't it? You know what I mean? And like Beardsley, do you know what I mean? Beardsley, McMahon, Whelan. You know what I mean? I just the whole team just wild. Like, but I think Barnes, um, he just had that skill, didn't he? Do you know what I mean? He, he, he took, you know, he was, he was, he, he could take people on. And I still think I know, I know the game's very different now, and people taking people on is not really encouraged that much. But I still think, I still think, if you've got someone who can beat a man, however they do it, it's just it's exciting and it changes the picture on the pitch in a split second. As opposed to a one-two taking, you know, a bit longer and it's a bit more, you know, yeah, telegraphed what's going to happen. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, John Barnes. Yeah, it, for, for me, it started Kevin Keegan because I'm 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 a bit older than you. How old are you? I'm 50, 53. <laughs> uh, yeah. August. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes I feel like I'm 60. Sometimes I feel <laughs> I'm 21. You know, just depends what day of the week it is. But yeah, yeah. Keegan was mine. But then you know, once Barnes. Barnes came. I was like, 
I've never seen any any player like him before. Like, is it there's a difference between you know sometimes watch watching footy on the telly and then actually being in the stands watching him play? I mean, oh, yeah. everyone was on tiptoes. Just, yeah, no, it's ridiculous. Like we, funny enough, I've only just remembered. Then we did we did a soccer six once. This is going back a while ago. At Goodison and a score against Neville Southall as well. This soccer six, which is fucking amazing. At Goodison, but um. Anyway, John Barnes was on one of the other teams. He wasn't on our team. Um, I can't remember the team he was on. Anyway, we played against them, whoever team it might have been the darkness or something like that. Anyway, we played against them. <laughs> and they, you know, you're playing against like there's a lot of ex-professionals there, so the level is really high, obviously, and even though they're old, you know, it's ridiculous. Like, but John Barnes did this pass that I still don't know how it happened. I don't, you know, I, I could see what he was doing and I seen what happened, but it was like a, he bent physics for a bit, for a minute. And honestly, it was wild, like being on the pitch with it, because it was like, you know, I played a bit, but it was like seeing that, seeing that level, what they, and you know, they obviously, and they're only, they're only having a kick about, they're not even trying. Do you know what I mean? It was wild, like, wild. That, that soccer AM was with the Zootons, wasn't it? Soccer AM we did with the Zootons, yeah, but this was a soccer six thing. It was like an, um, and that was with the Zootons as well, but it was like a charity sort of celebrity sort of footy match that they used to put on. That must have been a, a good laugh if that was it the dark. It's going against Neville Southall. The other was fucking wild, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Justin Hawkins, man. His uh, his podcast, yeah, 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 yeah. he's good, absolutely yeah. boss. Like he's yeah, he's, no, just like he, he's just he's he, just he looks like he, he could be a lad that you could just. Have a pint with you know. Oh, yeah, no, not. definitely. I think he is, isn't he? Yeah, I think he's very comes across very sound on it. Yeah, and um, he's kind of he's not copying, but he's doing a good fit. Like, there's this good music podcast. I've been if you ever see it on YouTube, but Rick Beato does, and he's mm-hmm. sort of, he's doing a bit. He's not copying. I'm not saying he's copying it, but he's not. He's doing, it's a bit like in that vein. But I do like the way he does it, Justin, and he's he's he shows his. I think what's good about some of those things with people who are famous or whatever is. It shows that he's a fan of music, do you know what yeah. I mean? Because musicians do tend to be fans of music, do you know what I mean? And they're not they're not as like they're not as pigeonholed as music fans sometimes, if you know what I mean. They're like, you know, music's just music, really, do you know what I mean? Did you see the one um he, he did the the little review of Rick Astley at Glastonbury? No, no, with, no. With the, when uh Rick when Astley the blossom. with the blossoms. Right. I, I mean uh, he looked like a proper rock star. He did. He did swing <laughs> the microphone. But I mean, just seeing Justin's face reacting to that just, <laughs> just made me feel like, you know, the, not all rock stars are up their own arses. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not all of them. <laughs> <laughs> just just <laughs> some of them. So, so speaking of, like, you know, your musical, like, direction, I mean, when, when did you first, did you, have you always played bass or did you start with guitar? Um, no, I sort of started with guitar and bass, really, about the same time. Funny enough, I played for Liverpool when I was a kid for a little bit fuzzy when I was about 13 and didn't last very long. Um, that was about six months. And then when that finished, I can kind of quite re- quite remember, because I, I thought I was going to be a footy player up until that point. I was like, I'm going to be a footy player. I was kind of always one of the best and all that. And so all that, you know, on that level. But as soon as I got to that Liverpool, it was like, oh, there, I, I felt completely out. I was like, oh, no, this is not, this isn't me. These are well, like, they were just, they were a lot more serious about it than me. And, and um, so I got jibbed after about six months by Steve Iway. But, um, and then, and then I remember thinking, well, I'm not just going to get a job. <laughs> I was like, I'm not doing that. And, you know, I could sort of see in my mum and dad that they just had jobs and it was just hard. You know, and and so me and my brother used to play guitars, and I was like, "Well, I'll just I want to do that then." Do you know what I mean? And um, I sort of set about trying to do that really, and I'm sort of still still trying to trying to work it out now, really. And yeah, it's you know. it's mad, mad to think. I think every kid in in uh, in Liverpool thinks they're going to play for Liverpool at Everton. <laughs> I mean, they do. That's what we do. We you know, when you're young, you kick the ball. At, around in your street, then you go to the park and then you get picked up by, you know. Totally. Like, you know, it's such a, I mean, it's such a competitive world, football, isn't it? You know, I do feel sorry for the lads who, like I said, I was always really good in my little groups. And then when I got up to that stage, it was like, oh, no, these, excuse me. And I even felt at the time, oh, these are much, 
more serious and you know more more committed. Even at that age, I felt like these are more definitely more committed to this thing to me than me. And then after so, you know, I feel sorry for the lads who the lads who really really push themselves and you know, and I've got obviously got an amazing talent because it's like point of a percent or whatever that gets through. Do you know what I mean? Like Trent sets up that academy thing, or doesn't he? Or like not an academy, like a bit of a thing to kind of catch some of the lads who who don't make it because it, you know, it's it's brutal, isn't it? It's brutal, like it's it really is brutal for the lads trying to get through. Like and um, and I think in Liverpool and like most sort of working class cities, I suppose football is a big deal, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? So I think. And you know, I'm you know the girls as well. Now you know everyone's play, it's, it's a big thing now. And footy's you know it means a lot to people. So I think people want to be involved in it. Do you know what I mean? So that's why you know there's a local field by ours, and you know there's a teams playing that every weekend. You know, the, like the grassroots football is still pretty strong in places like Liverpool. I think it's it, it's it's tough though because you know, I mean in 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 the eighties and probably early nineties, you know, for a kid like wanting to play, you know professional football the you're a hundred percent committed or you know some sometimes 75 but you've got your parents on your back like you, you got to do this for us and then <laughs> then it fails and then the kid goes into obscurity he doesn't know what to do with his life okay. now at least there's a fallback you know you you do have like psychologists and all this to help these kids you know because you uh, what a few years ago that man city Teenager who didn't oh, make okay. it suicide, God rest his soul, and all that. Yeah, no, it's, it, it, it's tough, you know. It is tough, but you know. Is, it, I think I think hopefully within an age now where things like this get highlighted more, and you know the realities get highlighted more, and that's all for the power of good, really. Because mm-hmm. you know, young people turn. I've got kids and all that, you know, and they're sort of kind of teenagers and that now, and like you know, like trying to make your way in life it's hard isn't it you know what I mean and I often people often say to me oh you've done well and you know I've played in some big bands and all that stuff and I have and I have worked at it don't get me wrong but also I can recognise that you know some you get a little break sometimes and some people I know plenty of good musicians you just, you just don't get the break you know what I mean it's just and it's the same with the fussy isn't it if you you know whatever the stars don't align you might not be as committed as the next guy next to you who's in the team and you know, well, you're like Billy Kenny from Everton and you end up yeah, going down yeah. the, wrong, the wrong path in that way or whatever, do you know what I mean? And, you know, there's plenty of ways to fuck it up, isn't there? Do you know what I mean? It's a lot easier to fuck it up. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, I, I can only imagine, like, you know, it's either you're playing football, you, you play, you know, the scouts are there and you have a really, really shit game. And same with a musician. <laughs> same with a musician as well. You have a really so, big. Now you've got to get lucky. And I'm, I'm really sort of like, um, I was really happy to see that Trent has done that because, like, you know, he's such a like, he's such a good local lad in that way. And like, you know, you know, he's living so many lads' dreams in this city. Do you know what I mean? And beyond, of course. But like, you know, he's been in the team since he was eighteen or whatever, and under an amazing manager <laughs> and you know and he's won it all already and he's like 24 or whatever he is do you know what I mean he's not even mad is he I, I think that's the thing we we forget how young like Trent is we forget how young Curtis Jones is as well yeah, you know, like, is, yeah. J- Jones is you know had the backlash um, th- from a lot of people just saying he's not good enough and the only reason he's, he's in the squad is he's a scouser which is absolutely stupid to say you know uh, Jürgen Klopp is not going to let jo- oh, oh, Curtis, because you're a scouser, I'm going to leave you in the team. I mean, some of the things that for some football fans say are just fucking absolutely ridiculous, isn't it? You know what I mean? Like we just said before, this is a multi billion pound industry. I think someone's going to go, well, yeah, we actually keep him because of this little thing. Like, I mean, instead of getting someone who's going to try and help you win, it makes it about winning, right? Yeah. You know so, uh, I, I, I think you- people don't really think about that. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's funny. I mean, it's such a weird thing being a footy fan. And we're all guilty of it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I'm not. But, like, we all act like we know a lot more than what we probably do. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> because, you know. you know. Got to blag, blag it sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, totally. But I just mean, you know, you know, some people think, oh, he's, you know, I hate it when people say he's not even trying. <laughs> you know, when people say that about certain players, it's like, fuck off, man. Do you think he's not trying? <laughs> I met Sean Dykes the other day, right? And um and at this gig in Nottingham. 
and he was really impressive, right? And I'm, I'm obviously a big Liverpool fan, but it was really nice to meet him. And he, like I said, he was really impressive. And it was like, the, he was he was really nice and, you know, we had a good chat for a while about Everton and football in general and stuff like that. But the big, like, he was a really nice guy, as I said, but the big takeaway I got was, if you fuck around with him, mate, I tell you now, <laughs> he'd fucking eat your eye. He he was like the worst bouncer. Because there was an air, he was being really nice, but there was just an air of, if you say the wrong thing at any time, I'll fucking eat you alive. Like, you know I mean? <laughs> so, like, God help the Everton players, but, like, I, well, the, my point being is that, like, football is so competitive. There's, there's no, I like you, you're saying as well, there's no room for any, you know, any, oh, we just, we, we let this guy in because of this, this little reason. Mm-hmm. You, Liverpool players, like any players in the Premier League, you've got to earn your place, haven't you? Ah, of course you have. Um, so, from uh, going back to your musical roots, um, what what were you listening to as a kid? Because uh, I know that your first band, the uh, Big Kids, was more like soul. Mm. Yeah. Well, when I was a kid, like, do you know what you mean? When I was really young, when I was like 15, you know, I'm a bit younger than you, but like when I was like 14, 15, like 95, Oasis and Nirvana, you know what I mean? And, and that was really exciting because they were the two biggest bands in the world and they were both really exciting bands, you know what I mean? And, you know, and there was a load of other great music as well. But, like, I often say, like, to be, I'm really happy to have been a teenager at a time when there was two, you know, great bands can be great bands and all that, but, uh, like, when you get a band like Oasis or Nirvana, who, who sort of, they change, they change society a little bit, do you know what I mean? They, the kids, there's like a new dress sense that's that's born out of it, and like you know when you'd seen a grunge kid and like, you'd be like, oh, you're into the van, and you'd see someone mm-hmm. with a Liam Eric, and you're oh, you're into Oasis. You know, what I mean? it was a, it was such a, and then it became then it, then it sort of jumps the shark quite quickly and all the rest of it. But in that moment when the match when the match has just been lit and there's you know there's two bands like really really on the edge of their their you know their greatness or whatever like that. So I used to love that, and then. Um, and, just, and then, yeah, just sort of went on the big sort of, you know, like everyone around that time, I suppose, I got into those bands of the moment. And then quite quickly, sort of, you start looking back into your dad's record collection a bit more and stuff like that. And then um, getting into a lot of Marvin Gaye and Curtis Mayfield and James Brown and stuff like that. And obviously the Beatles and the Stones and stuff like that. And, and then it's just one big sort of family tree of music then, isn't it, really, in terms of, like, you know, one thing leads to the other, leads to the other, leads to the other. And, and I'm still, you know, I'm sitting by loads of my records here. It's just it's just like an endless thing, really. It's just never going to stop in terms of what I'm into. And, yeah, The Big Kids was a was about, yeah, one of my first bands. I was in with Edgar. It was a very solely sort of thing, uh, what Edgar does, he's really good. And he was an amazing bass player, Edgar Jones. Everyone should check out his music on um, Apple or Spotify or whatever, because he's really good and he's kind of quite an... He's known in cult circles, I suppose, but in some ways he's quite unknown. Well, and he's an amazing bass player. So for me, as being a young musician, he wanted me to play the bass. And I was like, fucking hell, this could go weird. Because like everyone loves Edgar, rightfully so. He's one of, he's one of my favourite ever bass players, never mind. Like, you know, in Liverpool, like, ever. Do you know what I mean? He's just incredible. Um, so I was kind of worrying that people were like, going to be like, what the fuck else is this stupid kid doing, doing it? But thankfully, it kind of made me sort of, it threw me in the deep end and I swam, if you know what I mean, just about. I do remember thinking, like, this is going to, I could fuck this up here. Like, yeah. But I suppose it's one of those moments, maybe, looking back on it, that could have went wrong, but didn't. So it was a good thing for me, confidence, being sort of, Given the bass player role by such a good bass player, if you know what I mean. And then with the the Zootons, how um, you you were already mates with quite a few in the. Oh the yeah, lab. yeah. Sean the drummer was in the Big Kids with us as well. Like we went to school together and stuff. Um, and then so with Liverpool being quite incestuous anyway in the music scene, um, in a good way. <laughs> um, uh, so that, like I said, we were in the band with Edgar, and Edgar was like 10 years older than us, which was always fine. But like, I think Edgar split the band up because I think just because he had enough of it or something, I can't quite remember. But, um, and then we sort of, 
me and Sean were like, well, we're going to go and do something somewhere together because we were good mates and we played well together and stuff like that. And um, So Dave McCabe was in a band called Tramp Attack and they'd split up around the same time. So we found him and said, let's start a band. And he, he was already with Boyan, this lad who also used to go to our school. Um, and so they were kind of playing together and they were two guitars and we said, well, yeah, we're, <laughs> you're two guitarists, we're the bass player and the drummer, so that makes a band. So, that, you know, it's kind of like that's the way it goes in the film. It's like, you've only got to sort of come up with a name and that's it, really. So we kind of, and, you know, we were pretty shit at first and all the rest of it, just like any good band. Um, we didn't really know what we were doing because we never really set out to start a band before. We just always played with other people. But then Dave started writing really well and we started sort of writing with him really well and, and then it took off from there, really. It was all quite organic and lovely and all the rest of it. And Yeah, and then if you want the full story... You couldn't really pigeonhole the zoo songs either. No, you no, you no. You weren't exactly rock and roll. You weren't indie. You weren't, you, you know, even that spaghetti western kind of style. And then you had the folk to it as well. So you couldn't really like go, all right, you put it in in, in this genre of music. Oh, definitely, and there's a bit of soul in there as well with, with the Zuton tunes. There's definitely a, f- a few minor sevenths and stuff like that, which sort of give it a bit of a souly twinge. But, um, and yeah, no, I think that's one of Dave's and the band's, um, you know, credits that it never, it was quite, it was always quite hard to put, put a finger on it, like, which was good. And then, so then that finished, that carried on until about 2009 and 10, we did a couple of records and then we sort of, it's a bit of a bump really. And then, uh, and then we kind of like said, why don't we jib it for a bit in 2009-ish, I think. And we sort of said, well, we won't even announce it. We'll just, we'll just stop. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like, well, if you don't announce it, then it's like it hasn't happened. If you know what I mean? You can always just start again. You haven't got to worry about the press, if you know what I mean, or whatever. So we did that and then I've got, like I said, I've had kids for a long time. And um, I was like, and I was kind of ready to leave anyway, if I'm honest. Um, not for any reason, just for, you know, wanting to move on, I suppose, and all that. So once it kind of finished, um, weirdly, my mate Macca, um, he, I bumped into him in the recording studio and he said, oh, I'm going to play guitar with Noel in, in his solo project. And I was like, all oh, right, so... And then literally about a week later, the Zootons split up. And then and then I brought my cruise ship ligaments playing fuzzy <laughs> for the second time. And so I had to get that fixed. And that, that was the end of my career. And then that was the end of my fuzzy career after the second one. But um, whilst I was getting that, whilst I was recovering from that, I thought, I was like, what am I going to do? And it was a bit, you know, I was like early 30s, I suppose, at then. 31, something like that. So... You know, a classic sort of, like, you know, life moment, I suppose, for me. It was like, you know, what do we do? You know, wants to do something different and all that. And I did, like I said, my mate said about Noel's starting a band. And, and I had his number. I mean, we weren't mates or not. And just had his number from him coming to our gigs from time to time. And um, I just thought, I'll give you the text. And I thought, well, if he doesn't want me to do it, he'll say he's got someone else. Or if he's got someone else, he'll say he's got someone else. <laughs> so I thought, well, it's not really a bad outcome here. It's either yes or no, isn't it? And oh, I was like, not. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, and I don't think it'd be that. But even if it was that, like, so what? And then um, and I did it, and I literally had to go to Bog for the shit because I felt weird. <laughs> like it like sparked a physical reaction, and then um, and then and then he texted me back within about half an hour or something and said, "Yeah, that'd be amazing. I'll phone you tomorrow." And I've been in the band since, really. Yeah, so it's just like. Well, I mean, that's, that's got to be crazy, though. You know, it, as you said, as a fifteen-year-old listening to Oasis, who were the biggest band on the planet then. You know, uh, did I know it sounds so cliche, but were you going? All right, one one day, one day, I'll I'll, I'll play with this. No, this band. no, not at all. No, no, it was never like that because you don't. You know, that's just never. You don't imagine that. You know they'd ever split up on all that oasis or whatever. But I suppose you I suppose it's he was definitely he was definitely a part of me. That band was definitely a part of me wanting to be in a band. Do you know what I mean? So like that's a special thing. Like. Um and but then you know we'd had that on you sort of quite quickly realise what it's about. And 
you know, as in the music industry. And so we, and we made that, we made our own success and all the rest of it when we did. And, um, you know, so no, I was never obviously gunning for that, but I do remember like before I went down for the first rehearsals in about 2011 or something like that, I do remember kind of sort of like trying to get myself ready to picture them in the room just to, cause, cause I was like, well, I played with, I played music with loads of people. Do you know what I mean? And ultimately music's just music and people, it's a, it's a good leveler of people, you know, it doesn't matter how successful you are, you know, the music tells the truth, do you know what I mean? If something's not working or if something's, you know, and generally musicians agree, they go, yeah, it's not working, you know, we need to, you know, so, so I kind of thought like, well, it's going to be the same as it is with anyone really, I imagine. And it was, it was really the same. You know? and, and he's been great from day one, really. He's not, not um, been just the same as any 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 scouts that have been in a band with basically. So um, what do you what do you do when you first met him? Was it like more of like a jam session? Like let, let's jam. No, no, it was um it was he he'd already recorded the first record in LA, I think. And um so we'd been sent that and he was like laying all these songs, um, laying X other ones off Oasis back catalogue or something. And then um, we went for the rehearsal in this small rehearsal space in Shepherd's Bush. And it was me, Noel, and my mate Macher who was playing guitar at the time. Um, and there was a little camera set up, like video and us. And we just ran through the songs, just like sort of the three of us with no drummer, which was obviously a bit weird. And um, and he, like, I'd, I'd learned it off by heart anyway. I was sort of like, I'd quite quickly realised that this might be a good thing. And like, you know, like I said, I wanted to do something really different anyway. And this felt really different. Do you know what I mean? This felt like a whole new chapter and a whole new bunch of people. And, um, you know, and, and it was exciting because it was his solo project and all the rest of it. So I was really, I'd really done my own work. Do you know what I mean? I really knew the songs inside out a bit too well, really, if anything. And, um, and, so like that night after the first three years, he was like, he texted me and he was like, this is going to be brilliant. We'll go around the world, you know, all the rest of it. And I was like, okay, sounds it. <laughs> 14 years later, you're still going around the world with him. I know, I know, I know. It's mad. It's brilliant. I feel very lucky, I've got to say. I do feel very lucky. Um, like, especially like, like we haven't, obviously haven't done it for a while with the pandemic and that. And then we're doing this, we've just done seven weeks in America, and that was the first proper tour we've done since the pandemic. And you do realise how lucky we are to go, you know, travel to different countries and people turn up to the gigs. And do you know what I mean? It's, you know, you sort of get a reappreciation of how, of how lucky we are to have such a great job and, you know, all the rest of it. Well, there's no point being a musician if you can't play live, you know, so that's what I wanted to ask you as well, you know. I, I know Noel, I've listened to quite a few of his interviews and he, he said like, during lockdown, he'd already had that album already sorted. You oh, know. yeah, he's got a couple more done as well, I think. Yeah, it's just amazing where it, you, you've got some people that were very productive, you know, during lockdown and then others that would just like sit on the couch and just eat their crisps and drink. Yeah, yeah. Drink. Well, How was it for you? Well, well, it was funny for us because in 2019 we finished in like in the winter, and we'd just been in Australia with you two supporting them on the Joshua Tree tour, and then we did our own show in Thailand on the way home. I think that was in like the November or something like that, something like that. Um, and anyway, so we've been touring for about five years at that point without without any proper like. You know, we've been home and all that, but I mean, like, without, like, six months off or anything like that, to sort of, you kind of need a, bit, a proper time home if, when you've been torn and something. So we'd had, we'd had this quite busy five years or so, and so we were going to have two years off, basically, anyway, something like that. So I was like, fucking hell, great. So I've just done all this work. I've been, I wanted to start my own project a little bit. I've been working on that in the background, and I was like, okay. Now, so then we turn into 2020, and I'm like, right, we're going to win the league. Like, um, we, got, we were play, due to play Glastonbury that summer, 2020, after uh, before McCartney. So I was like, we're going to win the league. We're going to win it by about April. Uh, I'm going to have one of the best summers of my life. Then we're going to play Glastonbury. 
um, be- like before McCartney. And I was so, and then I'm going to have, a, then I'm going to have like two years off after that. You know what I mean? I'm going to have two years to myself to try and finally sort of get around to getting a record together myself, which will never fucking happen, but I'll, I'll be constantly working on it. But, I, you know, it's like, okay, sound, at least I'll, I'll you know, this is so some good time to do it now. And I was excited for that. And then obviously with what happened, I remember in the March, right, that's just a long story. I'll get into this a bit more tonight. So then, do you remember when we lost to Watford? Yeah. That, and that was the first loss, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. And I remember saying to me, lad, my lad's, my lad's 22, you know, he's quite old, so he was like 19 or something then. And, it, and I said, there's going to be a blip. There's got to be a blip. I'm not having it that we get, because we'd won about 29 out of 29, I'd be a sort of stupid dog, 28 out of 29. I said, there'll be a blip. I'm telling you now, I've never seen it where there's not a blip. And then we lost that game. And then we lost to Atletico Madrid in the week, I think it was. And then, so then we were out of that. And then we played Bournemouth at home and we were 2 1 down. Right. I remember watching it in front of me in the back room. I was fucking, I was like, we're going to fucking lose it. We're going to, I couldn't believe it. I was convinced at that point that we're going to lose it. And we come back in that game to be 3 2 up, and Milner clears one off the line. Do you remember? He runs back, mm-hmm. just about catches in, clears it off the line. Now, once he did that, I was like, we're fucking on. We are on. This is fucking happening this way. Right? And when, and when, it, when it got stopped, right? <laughs> and then Glastonbury got pulled like about the same week. I don't reckon I spoke for about two weeks. <laughs> I couldn't. I just me. Me missus says that you had. She says I reckon I had a breakdown <laughs> because I was like, I was so ready for like this. Per, it was a perfect summer coming. Perfect. Like do you know what I mean? Like, oh, we are. I had tickets. The game when they got stopped the footy. We were meant to play Palace on the Monday, mm-hmm. but the next game was Palace. I remember that because I had tickets sorted. I've got a connection to the club. I had tickets sorted, and. I was like, got the ticket sorted. It's all fucking on. It could happen against Palace on the Monday or whatever it was, me, or whatever it was. And it was so shocking. I, honestly, I was so, it, it was distressing. Right? Apart from that, <laughs> I was all right. <laughs> once, once, it, once the, honestly, and no disrespect to anyone, I shouldn't say things like that because people lost people and all that. But I was so angry that the footy had been stopped. And, and I know there was a pandemic going on, and I take it very seriously. I'm not a, an idiot about the pandemic at all. But because I was just I was so selfishly, like, angry, that the, I was like, I can't believe. Like, I, it, I was shocked. I was in shock because everything was so right, like, that season. Do you know what I mean? And I, I was waiting for the thing to happen all, the whole time. I was like, something's... It's too right, this. Do you know what I mean? And obviously, I didn't make it happen, but like, it was like I was saying to me, lad, I was like, this is like aliens have landed. I've never fucking heard of a pandemic. I was 42 at the time, whatever it was. <laughs> fucking pandemic. The fucking Black Death. That was fucking years ago. That's never happening again. That shit. And obviously, it was fucking more fool the rest of us because it might fucking happen again as well. But, you know, um, so once that got sorted, I felt all right about it, but um, I mean, it's still a sore point, I think, with other Liverpool fans. Remember hearing Milner talk about it recently before he left, and he, and he was saying, you know, and I think, yeah, I think, I mean, moving on a little bit from the pandemic, but I think, like, Klopp's mission for this next three, has he got three years left? 26, yeah. So three seasons, yeah. Is it's got to be to at least win one Premier League in front of the fans? Do you know what I mean? And, like as it, and I don't mean like he's he's got to do that. I mean like that's what he'll want to do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Well, I mean that's what and I think that's why you know we we did the uh, we did the you know City tour with the FA Cup and League Cup. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. See, a bit, a if you're not a Liverpool, yeah, if you're not a Liverpool fan, you don't understand why we actually did it. It's because. You know, thousands of upon well, millions of people never got to actually be there. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, that I, I, I'm, I'm with you as well, Ross. I, I, you know, I'm pretty selfish as well because you're just like, this isn't right. This is not fair. This, this, this you know, COVID is going around. You go, this isn't fair. 
We no, wait no, thirty no. years for this. No. We 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 want to be there. And I mean, uh, and it was sad to to just see in the stadium nobody no, in there. It was it was sad, right? It, and it is a sad reality that that's how it played out. But also, as much as that is the case, there's a bit of me that goes, Do you know what? Life is mad, and like you know, that's a good example of how mad life can be. A team waits fucking thirty odd years, and then there's a pandemic. And then, like, you know, we were all outside the ground and all that, that night and all that. And it was magic, do you know what I mean? Because, and it was kind of tainted in because everyone was a bit worried about they were going to catch it and give it to your man and all that. But, like, yeah. you know, it was still magic and it was it was kind of weirdly special for it, I suppose, do you know what I mean? But I'm convinced he'll win it again, Klopp. Like. I think so as well. I mean, you know, and again, you know, with, uh, with, with City do, doing what City do, I think we would have won it maybe a couple more times as well, but you know. Oh yeah, but I don't, I don't hold any grudge about that, like because you know they're a good it's, team. They're a good team. Like, yeah, they're, they're never, never mind a good team. They're a record-breaking team, just like we were when we won the Premier League. I often like to remind I've got a lot of City fans, obviously, and United fans. Like you know, we won it in the quickest time ever that season. People could give it when people start chatting the asterisk bullshit and all that. If you want to give it that, the real asterisk is the season after because it's a whole season without fans. You know what I mean? So if you get, and I don't even think that's an asterisk because they still played fuzzy. You know what I mean? So, you know, the, um, you know, yeah, we won it in like in the record number of games and we were outstanding that season. It's fucking amazing. So good. But yeah. like I said, I'm convinced he did it then and he'll do it again because he's, he's done it at Dortmund and he showed he can do it with us. And I think what's mad is that, I, and I open right about this, could be wrong, but I think, you know, he went from being like seventh or eighth to being in the Champions League final and coming fourth in the season. You know what I mean? So, you know, I think we can go from a poor, my point being, I think we can go from a poor season last season. Mm-hmm. So absolutely challenging again straight away. I do think it'll probably take a year. I think there's a few too many new heads this season yeah. to hit the ground proper running. I mean, obviously, I'd like to see us do it, but I think, I think, I think we'll be, get back in the Champions League this season, and I think we'll challenge the year after. Yeah, I'm with you with that. So, I was there. Uh, I was the banter in the band. Like who? <laughs> I, I, obviously, I know Noel's a City fan. Who, who's uh, who's the yeah, other? Not fan? other? There's not many of the big footy ads in the band, really. Um, yeah, Chris, Gem, and Mikey aren't really that fussed, really. Um, Gem's a bit of a Tottenham head because of his son, and Mikey is a Brighton fan because of his son. And Chris, I'd say he's a Liverpool fan because of his son. He's not particularly asked. Um, no, obviously Noel, big city guy. Um, and yeah, it's funny, right? Because when, when I joined the band, we weren't really rivals, right? In 2012, us and City weren't really, didn't really have anything about us. So it's funny because it's actually developed whilst we've been in the band, do you know what I mean? And um, I remember one time at the start of the band, um, now, when we go to Italy with Noel, he's like a god, like in Italy, like like a genuine. And so when and I'm kind of used to seeing how people react around him now because I've been around him for so long. But when it when it was the start, it was like, oh wow, <laughs> you know, he's a fucking Anthony guy. But you know, you know, they're literally like weeping in the streets and all this madness. So anyway, so we're in Milan, and we watched Liverpool v City, and I think it was. In fact, I know it was. I can remember it. And when Balotelli scored a, a like a dead long range goal for us against them, it was at mm-hmm. home. I think it was to equalise to make it one all. Anyway, because we've been getting beat for a bit and we've equalised, <laughs> all these fans you get the fans waiting in the lobby, but they're not allowed to go anywhere past the lobby. And we were we were like in the bar, so they can sort of see through into the bar, but they're not allowed in. So then when I've come, we've scored and I've jumped up and I've gone, <laughs> like grabbed him. <laughs> so then all these fans have seen it and he, he wasn't into it. You know I mean? So I had to like, I sort of quite realise that like, you know, his, uh, his public image is a, a thing. And we, um, and also I thought like it's a bit of a dickhead move anyway, sort of, you know, you've got to kind of be respectful of your friends Um you know, the other team thing and all that. But uh, no, it's funny. We don't really talk about it that much anymore, about football. We do talk about football. Talk about football a lot. 
We don't really talk about the Liverpool City thing because because he's a very sore loser. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll say that. I hope that he sees it one day. Um, <laughs> but um, oh yeah, he's a very competitive beast. And um, yeah, no, it's good. It's good. It's good banter. Especially it was really. I mean, it, it was wild. You know, like there was a, you know, those those Champions League quarterfinals, and you know that we had with them and all the rest of it. Like, like my lad was at was at the one that we when we. We beat them at home, and I think we, we end up beating them away. And the Salah goal, do you know what I mean? And my lad was at that one, like, and that, we watched that again. Funny enough, again in Milan, but this was a couple of years later. And fucking hell, it was, you know, like, <laughs> it's just a, it's a big deal, isn't it? You know what I mean? Because you know, we both, we, we, he's a really passionate City fan, and I'm a really passionate Liverpool fan. And a Champions League. You know, is the biggest. It feels. It just feels electric, doesn't it? You know, I know I'd, I'd rather win the Premier League and all that, but those midweek nights, you know, it's fucking wild, isn't it? Like so. Yeah, I mean, there was nothing like that. That that match. You know, when when we went to uh, the Etihad and we we you know beat them, they scored early with yeah. Zeus, That's so right. all all up in the air like ah, and then you know right, yeah. we scored, and then uh, Bobby scored the winner. That's and right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, I went crazy. I mean, I because, because we're, you know, at that time we're watching two of the best teams in the entire world. Absolutely. I mean, it was like boxers going back and forth. No, definitely. And funny enough, we, me and my son and his mates went to the city game at City. It was in the January, just after Christmas, right at the start of January. I think it was the first year we really challenged them. So the year before we won the league. Whatever, so going into 19, I suppose, um, 18, 19. And we played them in the January at their ground and we got beat 2 1. And um, and it was like, just like it was the one, I think it was the one where it was like nearly in by a millimeter and all the rest of it. And Stones cleared it off the line, but it was just, it was the best game of footy I've ever been to. And I've been to a lot of fucking games of footy. I've seen some great teams come to Anfield and all, I've seen them all at Anfield, but uh. It was, just, and even though we lost, I mean, my lad was fuming because we lost, and I was like, Do you know what? I'm, I'm a bit gutter than that, but like that was amazing, like that was wild, and the fact that we're competing on that level with a team who were also on that level is fucking an amazing thing to see. Like, you know, that's too, just too heavyweight, you know, uh, and and you just watch, you know, you. You watched all of last season and you could just tell Arsenal weren't going to win the league. You just knew it. Like, it's just a juggernaut. Well, I, I mean, I know what you mean, but like when they had the other, those couple of games, like that one against Villa, when they were like 2 0 down, then 1 4 2. And there was another one at, at the Eth- Is it what's the place called? The Emirates? Is it? Yeah. Um, when they, um, they came back against someone as well. And I thought, I think, I mean, I do think they've probably missed a chance with not having Europe last season and all that. But I think that, that first, they put a great first half of the season together, man. Do you know what I mean? I think it'd be interesting to see what they're like this year. Really, yeah. Well. yeah. well, I mean, you know, they've added quality. I mean. I mean. and I'm, I'm, the jury's still out on Havertz. But um, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. With, with bringing in Rice, you know, they've got a young. Team, I mean, Saka, I, I, I think he's an absolute gem. Oh, yeah, definitely. He's electric, isn't he? Like, then, they've got some, yeah, they've got some Martinelli, Saka, Odegaard, the young, hungry squad. I think they're definitely something to look out for. Do you know what I mean? But never but, count us out, you know, that that's the thing. Like, oh, I, no, I, I would, I would, I would think the fire's been lit again. Oh, it looks like it hasn't. When you like, I've watched some of the inside training and things and all that. Uh, that they've been putting out and Klopp's talking a big game like do you know what I mean and I don't think he's the sort of guy to do it without feeling that he's got something that's going to back it up do you know what I mean I think Nunes' is second season you know and he had a good decent enough start last season I know he had he, he drew some bad attention and all that but uh, you know good enough decent enough goals return for the first season and enough you know of us and if it causes people problems do you know what I mean running the people the way he does and all that I think he'll kick on a bit this season, hopefully. And, you know, yeah, we'll see what happens with me, I suppose. Yeah, I, I like Akko. I really do. Oh, great. Great. I, 
I think a lot of people just don't really on the, you know, there was, there was lots of things that like made last season shite, you know, right. too many injuries, World Cup, but I mean, every team has that, you know. No, it's just, but I think, I think it's all right to cite it though, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, we are, like, because that on top of, and I, I didn't like when at the start of last season or before Christmas, people were talking about Liverpool and saying like, well, it, it's the, it's the hangover from nearly winning the quadruple and that. And I'd be like, nah, I don't reckon, you know, and I'd sort of brush that off a bit. But then the more the season went on, I thought, well, yeah, it does make some sense because a team's kind of at the end of a cycle in terms of its, its you know, members. And like, you know, they were nearly hit an absolute peak of peaks. And they were fucking close, man, you know what I mean? It's like, and they failed. And like, it's understandable, I suppose, that, that's, that on top of the injuries, the World Cup, the, the short preseason, like you say, and I think it was a perfect storm of shit that I was off early, you know. Yeah, and I think they'll be ready to go again. You know, I, 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 I can't imagine. Like, I think what well, us as supporters, we don't really picture these players as like, like me and you, like people, you know, humans, no, totally, yeah. totally. Like like robots, like Van Dyke said uh, after the World Cup, he's like he, he's we're treated like robots. Like we can play and play and play, and and I can't imagine playing sixty three matches, every match <laughs> possible, losing oh. the lead by a point. Oh. I'm, I'm pretty much playing, you know, Majed off the park for a while. Oh, you know, Kuzwa is their man of the match. Well, yeah, the, yeah. The player at the game, yeah, and, on they, and, all that. Mm. Yeah, and they have one and score. You know, I mean, I can't. I mean, it hurt me. I can't. Yeah, no, same, same. I'll just look up once, like definitely. But I, th- I think they'll go again. I really do. I think the fire's burning, and you know, hopefully, with a few, at least two more players coming in. I, I think. Yeah. I think oh no, they'll... definitely, definitely. I mean, we're in for Lavia today, aren't we? But I think, like, well, I mean, he's only nineteen. Him, I think. I think there's got to be another, mid- another more experienced six coming. Because, you know, Fabs, while he had a bit of an off-season, like a lot of people last season, had his best. It was fucking wild. Like, and I think, you know, it's such an important position these days on the pitch that I think having, having someone who's tall who can do the job so they can win aerial battles as well is such an important thing. And he had a bit of a turn of pace in some weird ways over the short space, Fabs. You know what I mean? He could... He could make stuff up quick, do you know what I mean? If he had to get back, and obviously his awareness was so good as well. I think, I think you don't want to be starting the season with a prospect in that position. Like I just think we need oh, to find oh, someone. And I don't we already have a prospect, though. We already have one. That's well, exactly. Thing. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. We've got him, and I think Lavi is just a prospect in here. Really, I don't think he, he. You know, I don't know that, but I don't think he's. he's well, he's not. You know, he's not 24 and knows exactly what he's doing. You know what I mean? Which is, I mean, it'd be amazing if we could find a way to try and go back in for two or many, but it doesn't seem like, there doesn't seem to be any noise, but... Yeah. Same, I suppose. And like, like I said before, I've got faith in Liverpool that they'll, they will, that they'll get it right this season. Well, what what I want to ask you now, like, I always ask musicians to come on. Um, your, your, like, festival line-up Friday... Saturday, Sunday, alive or dead? Who, who would you have as headliners? Okay, a Friday night and a Saturday night and a Sunday night. Okay, that's a good shout. Okay, so I think for a Friday night, I think Friday night's the most exciting night to go out. Right, like, like I think it's just the end of the week, and Saturday night's obviously a big party night anyway. But for some reason, I always find Friday more exciting. So I'll put Nirvana on the Friday night and that would be wild because it's like the start of the weekend then, do you know what I mean? Like, it would be mental sort of thing. I'll put them on and I... Who would I put on on Saturday? Um, um, but I mean, you'd have to put... If you've got a chance to put the Beatles on, you've got to put the Beatles on, haven't you, really? Do you know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> like, if I'm promoting this thing for one night only, I think I've got to put the Beatles on. On Saturday, because they're big time, they've got the tunes, they can pull off a Saturday night. Um, and on the Sunday, you want something a bit more chilled out. So 
I reckon I'd put Bob Dylan on on the Sunday. I'd have Nirvana, the Beatles, and Bob Dylan, and loads of other boss stuff. In the yeah, that, man, that's a killer lineup. Yeah, I'd go pay see pay to see that defo. Really? Yeah. <laughs> or jump the fence either. Or, yeah, or, or dig a hole under the fence. Just hey, to, hey, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to blag your way in now. You just gotta find like a, a hole to you know go under. I know, not the same as it was in our day. Yeah. <laughs> You see these YouTubers, like, you know, t- I saw the one, like, who, who did the the one that was on under a little, like, like ditch. Really, right, boss? He went under it, then he went over, then he, he was watching, you know, the security, like, what time they switch. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, then, he, then he got over, and then... Uh, boss, he, like, made the YouTube of it as well. Yeah, I was like, well, you ruined it for everyone else now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's going to be more security where you just popped popped in. So, yeah, that's done. But, uh, no, I think I think you can get walked in, can you? I think that's a way to do it, but I wouldn't know. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what, what are your um, uh, predictions for next season then? Or this season coming? This season coming, I think, I mean, I'd like to think that we challenge for the title. And I do think that's possible. I do think it's possible because I think Jürgen's got it in him to turn a team, a team's fortunes around quite quickly, especially with new faces. But I think realistically, I think with what looks like it's going to be a whole new midfield of of like first teamers and people who are stepping into the midfield, if you like, from time to time, um, I think it might be a big ask to ask us to to challenge against City what will be an incredible City team again undoubtedly an Arsenal team who've improved Chelsea have got a great manager haven't they they've got Poch now haven't they so there's every chance that he can whip them together quite quick do you know what I mean so there's a lot, obviously a lot and United have got a decent thing as well unfortunately mm. You know, he seems to be galvanising them a little bit. I think we will come a third next season, and I think we should be happy with that. I think yeah. we, we could win a trophy along the way, which obviously would be nice. It'd be nice to win the Europa League. I think it's in Dublin, isn't it? Yeah, the final. Should be boss. Ah, that would be mad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be excellent fun, wouldn't it? So I think we'll come third. Yeah, I think we'll come third and win the Europa League. Fuck it, there you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah, it's from Ross. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, if you want to uh, check out Ross, you know he's with with Noel's band, um, and then maybe you know he'll get off his ass and actually uh, do his own album at some point. Yeah. And, uh, hopefully, you don't need another pandemic to uh, you know get that sorted out. Well, I didn't finish it in the first one, so if we get another one, we'll see if it happens then. Um, no, I'd, I'd love to. Uh, hopefully, I will release some music sometime. I do love writing music, but. Um, it's just getting it together to be in one one feasible idea, really. But I've, like I said, I've never really aimed at it before the pandemic, so it's something that's definitely in my sights. Hopefully it'll be out soon. There you go, out soon, two, three, four, five years. <laughs> Maybe ten. <laughs> it, it'll be worth it, though, right? That's that's what you have to see. We waited yeah. 30 years for the league, didn't we? You can wait a bit more for my solo record. There you go. Well, I appreciate you coming on, mate. Um like I say all, all the time, like and subscribe. I appreciate everyone that's listening and uh, we'll see you later.